Welcome to Acts Christian Church, where you're the head and not the tail. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Look, I had a Bible reflection that I just wanted to share with you, wherever you may be in the world. As you can see, my backdrop is in a synagogue. They must have been awesome places, especially when Jesus was able to open the scrolls and to read from those scrolls. But you know something? I'm drawn to scripture that I think is just magnificent. Hey, If I had to put a title on this, it would be learning to read the room. You may ask me, what do I mean by that? There's often times I would be asked to go and minister to uh, a church or convention or conference. And although they've given me the theme, as I walk up to the lectern or to the pulpit, all of a sudden, the atmosphere changes. And God would actually tell me, I don't want you to do what you've studied, because I want you to read the room, because I want to be glorified in this place. And I pray that ministers, those that have been given the opportunity to rightly divide the world, would also be very sensitive and to move according to the Spirit in that given time and circumstance. You know, sometimes there are people in that room that just needs an encouragement, deliverance or prayers but sometimes we're caught up because we have to deliver this word we just plow through and i've taught many of my leaders it's so important to read the room what is god saying for here and now he may have given you that word but because there's something that's going to happen in that room god wants you to align yourself to it sensitively that he will allow you to follow his leading. Well, something like that happened in the synagogue. And if you read in Luke 13, verse 10 to 17, and let me read it for you. On the Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmities. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up. Praise God. Wow. If you read on in that scripture, it will talk to you about the other people in the church was looking forward to the sermon, but felt that this was, in a sense, a distraction to what they were prepared to hear. Now look, listen to this, reading the room. Continue to read that scripture because I'm telling you, 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 you'll be amazed. Here's Jesus, and I can imagine, Jesus was studying or preparing himself the night before to rightly divide the word in the synagogue. Can you imagine Jesus just about to read the scriptures Then his eyes fastened on this particular woman? And I can believe everybody's looking at Jesus because they were expecting that particular ministry to happen. How many of you know that there are also ministries outside of the pulpit? Watch this. Have you ever taken a good look at this woman? Sick sick for 18 years. What are you trying to tell me? This woman in that synagogue has been coming to that place for 18 years. Nobody took 
any notice of her. But how could you have missed this woman? Because when I do my research, she was bent over. She was almost double bent. She was crippled and unable to stand up or even look people in the eye. Can you imagine this woman? Nobody would miss her. I believe she knew exactly who was who according to the sandals they were because all of her eyes was paced to the ground. There are most times, maybe she didn't make it always to the synagogue and she was just confined from the home. Wow. I can believe that when she did make it to the synagogue, it was difficult. Can you imagine? Being bent over, almost doubled, she had to take her time or she could have actually toppled over. Can you imagine her moving? She was... Sh shuffling along one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, hoping and trusting that she wouldn't fall down. You know, this went on for 18 years. Maybe people scorned her. Maybe she was in that remit of being unclean. Can you imagine her life being hindered because of her position? Maybe she couldn't do any chores in the house. She couldn't clean. She couldn't tidy. Maybe she even looked very much as a person that you wouldn't stand by. But she was in the synagogue that day. Maybe she couldn't go into the marketplace and barter for her food or buy her food because of her condition. Can you imagine people going up to her, knocking her over, and maybe scorning her? Oh, dear. Can you imagine if she had family, she was not able even to look them in the eye and talk to them. Can you imagine what it must have felt like only seeing the ground? Everything that she did, it was affected because of her condition. Oh, wow. And being Jewish as well, can you imagine, as I mentioned, she would have felt very unclean. Come on. There's a lot going against this woman. I believe even people would hesitate in speaking to her. In plus, they couldn't see her eye to eye. They would have just ignored her. But you know what I love about this woman? Going up against the incredible odds, she made it to the synagogue. Just to worship. But here's what I love about ministry outside of the pulpit. So here's Jesus, just about, about to rightly divide the words, read from the scrolls, and his eyes fastens upon this woman and said to himself, I believe, oh, I, I, he must have thought, I, I can't preach this sermon. I can't read this because... There's ministry beyond just reading today. I've got to follow the leading. And his eyes fastened upon that woman. And the Bible says immediately he went down, laid his hands upon her, and immediately she straightened up. I love this. Ministry outside the pulpit. Preachers, I'm talking to you out there. Those in leadership, I'm talking to you. Those who's been given the opportunity to rightly divide the word of God. There are going to be times where all of a sudden what you've come prepared to do, God says, no, I don't want that. There is another move, mighty move of God in the house that I want you to be sensitive to. And I tell you, Jesus thought to himself, I can't read this. He went immediately to this woman, laid hands and says, you are loose. Immediately the woman, from a position of being bent, stood up straight and began to praise God and to worship. Jesus had an assignment with that particular scripture to read, but he was moved. He moved outside of the pulpit and began to minister. And I'm saying, God, help me. Help me, Lord, although I may be preparing for a word to rightly divide in the word of God in the church. Help me to see the needs. Those are that needs healing and deliverance. Those that need to have attention. Those that need a financial breakthrough. Lord, lead me to the point that I can say, this is what I had to preach. But I see that there are greater needs in the house. 
and allow God to use me to bring healing and deliverance. Come on, let us read the room. We all need to read the room. You don't know how many times, how many years individuals have been coming to our services that are broken, that needs an encouragement, and we just do it as usual, preach as usual. And, you know, sometimes people just don't want to hear us preach. They want to see a preach. Ha <laughs> ha, I say it again. Some people don't want to hear a preach. They want to see a preach. And so then when Jesus came down, laid his hands on that woman that has been suffering for 18 years. And immediately, <laughs> miracle took place. But if you read on, you'll find out they put him aside and said, Jesus, hey, you know, you should have done that on the Sabbath day. You, you know, you, you, had a, you had an obligation to read the scriptures. And sometimes this is how we're feeling, that we have an obligation just to go through the norm. Every Sunday, the same thing, the same thing. And sometimes God says, I really want to have my way in this service. But you tie my hands. I pray right now that we'll read the room. I do believe in our congregations right now, there are people that need deliverance. I believe in our congregation, there are people that need healing. And I know in our congregation, there are people that want to have a turnaround situation in their lives. But we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that we can say, you know, I'm going to put this aside and let my eyes fasten upon the issue and bring about healing and deliverance by being sensitive to the Spirit of God. Read the room. Immediately, she was able to stand up strong. I want you to understand there are people that may be in our churches, in our prayer meetings, that are just hoping and trusting somebody would read the room and say, you know, this is the issue that I've been going through for years and we would minister direct. And I'm telling you, if we did that and lived in the spirit, our ministries would it be a place where people will be running, just like the woman at the well. She said, come see a man who tells me stuff that nobody else could. We need an encounter with God the same way when we begin to read the room. Jesus read the room. People may have been disappointed because I wanted to hear him read the scriptures, but he stopped. He said, I, I, can't, I can't do it like this today. There is somebody that has a need, and I've got to meet him. This is my Bible reflection. Read the room. If you want to see revival take place in our ministries, let us read the room. Let us hear what God is saying to us and say, that sermon is not for today. Because we have a bigger issue in the house. And I'm trusting you as a man of God, I'm trusting you as a woman of God to step out in faith and trust me to see the bigger picture. Read the room. You don't know who's sitting in that place of worship, in that church, who's just lost a loved one, who's coming up against financial hardship, who is saying, what am I going to do for food tomorrow? By you reading the room and tapping into the spirit, you are able to bring healing and deliverance and they will be set free. Read the room. And I'm praying and trusting God that I am in that position. And every time I stand to minister, I'm saying, Lord, let your will be done. That at the end of this service, at the end of this position, somebody's life will be changed. Read the room. If Jesus didn't read the room that day, he would have opened those scrolls and read the Holy Scriptures. And that woman who has been bent over for 18 years wouldn't have got her biggest breakthrough. Her whole perspective changed. I say, God, use me. Use me to read the room. Use me, Lord, that if you say not to minister this word and to follow my leading, your leading, Father, help me to live at such a position that we will see change and breakthrough. Read the room, pastors. Read the room, bishops. Read the room, moderators. Read the room and say, God, what would you have me to do? I pray that you've been blessed by this word. Help me, Father, not to miss it. That the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ will become relevant to every single one that hears it. And sometimes 
God might just want you to pray in that place. He may just say, let's call everyone to the altar. You just don't know what he'll do from there. Read the room. Let God have his way. Wherever you are at this moment, I want to pray with you at this moment. I want to be sensitive to what you may be going through at this moment. Financial, your body's filled with pain. The doctor's giving you news that you wasn't expecting. You're thinking to yourself, where do I go from here? I'm reading the rune and I'm going to pray accordingly that God will make a divine intervention wherever you are at this moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, Father, whatever it is that's going on in that person's life, listening to this broadcast, I pray, Father, that your divine intervention will meet them at their crossroad. I pray that you'll give them insight. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray, Father, that you would lead them to the right person that will speak a word of life into them this moment, Father. I pray right now that a knock will come to the door and you will send your angel to provide something that they are so desperately needing. God, I pray, help us to be sensitive to the moving of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now if they are contemplating you know, suicide and thinking, what's the use? I pray right now that this word, because I've read the room, Father, and I'm listening to your voice, that I will tell you there is life, hallelujah, life to be lived in Christ Jesus. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be able to receive this word. He wants to give you life and more abundantly. Father, I pray right now for those that are on a verge of just throwing in the towel. I pray right now, Father, that they will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Father, help me to read the room. Whoever's hearing this broadcast today, I pray that this will set you up to move towards the next level of your life. He loves you with an everlasting love. I'm reading the room. I'm sensing that there are people right now needed to hear this encouragement. They have been disappointed upon disappointment. But today, I want you to know that your disappointment has become an appointment with God. That God is about to elevate you and lift you to another level. I'm reading the room right now. I'm getting into your business. 18 years has been a long while that you've been going through this. But I declare you free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will lift your head. You will stand up strong. You will declare that the work of the Lord. You will walk in his obedience and know that today is the day of your turnaround. I'm reading the room. Whatever you're going through today, I take authority and tell you that Jesus has come to visit you and to give you another alternative that there is life and life abundantly. Father, hear this prayer and use this as a channel for your blessing and a turnaround in their lives. Father, I thank you that Jesus was able to put aside the scrolls and fasten his eyes upon the woman that was going through it for 18 years. She stood up straight and immediately she began to worship. Wherever you are at this moment, worship God with me just for a few seconds more as I end this broadcast because God has visited you. God has said enough is enough, and today your breakthrough has come. Father, I thank you that I was able to read the room to so many in this house. And Father, help me to be sensitive at all times that I can lay this aside and do as you would command me to do in this 21st century. Father, we pray a blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. I hope you were blessed by that word. It was something that came to me. I just wanted to share with you. Reading the room, leaders, and allowing God to do what he wants to do and bring about the breakthrough and the breakthrough that he intended for our congregation. Today, stand up straight. You'll be delivered. God bless you. And remember, you are the head and not the tail.